let's talk Jokic because the guy's averaging a triple double and a career high in scoring. His Nuggets are now seven and three despite starting zero and two, and they were picking up some key injuries and everybody started panicking, right? And they were eking out these wins, but they got a good record now. But even by his standards, Jokic has been unbelievable to start this year. But will that be enough to convince MVP voters to anoint him a fourth? And I know it's very early. We're not even at Thanksgiving, let alone Christmas, to start talking <laughs> about the MVP. Mm-hmm. But it's an interesting debate about, like, can this guy actually win a fourth MVP? And would you have him at the top of your MVP ladder right now, a couple weeks in? I would say, yeah, he has to be at the top. Before the season, I didn't think there was a chance him winning three titles recently, losing in the second round, and it just not looking great for the Denver Nuggets in general. Mm -hmm. That being said, this is the best Jokic we've ever seen. It's only 10 games. So I I think it is difficult for him to be able to keep this going the entire season. He looks ridiculous. I know he is the best player in the world, so maybe that's that's just off. Maybe he will be able to do it. But as you said, they started 0-2, and he said, okay, I'm going to have to do this all myself. You said the most points yes but he's he's leading in so many categories for himself he's the this is the best Jokic in minutes played he's just playing the most he's shooting the most he's stealing the more most plays he's blocking the most shots he's assisting on the most baskets for the Denver Nuggets he's assisting more than half his team's baskets so his assist percentage is ridiculous like yeah. he does everything his his raw numbers are so good his PER is so good there's nobody comparing to him right now there just literally isn't. <laughs> so it's it's impossible to say I'd give it to somebody else. Would you give it to somebody else? Not right the, now. Yeah. No way. Yeah. No, you couldn't. I, you would be lying through your teeth if you're trying yeah. to convince yourself right now through 10 games that he's not the MVP. He is the most valuable player to his team. Again, which yeah. sounds insane. He's averaging basically 30 points per game, nearly 14 boards, nearly 12 assists. I mean, if he continues with those stats, no player in NBA history has put up those numbers for an entire season. Mm-hmm. The thing with him is... You were saying it like he's leading all these categories for him Mm -hmm. compared to um, seasons prior. I think what's fascinating is could he have been doing that all those other seasons prior? And I start to think he probably could have. Yeah. But he realized he doesn't have to. Obviously, he had more help around him. Guys weren't as injured. You know, Jamal was maybe better at a time. Like, whatever. He's such an unselfish player that he doesn't have to be like, I got to go score 30 to 35 tonight. I got to shoot all these threes. Everything, I mean, everything usually goes through him anyway, but like to another level. Mm. But he's realized when they started, especially slowly, he's like, I got to do this. I got to keep this team up, heads above water here. So I have to do everything. Can he do it for an entire season? Yeah, it's a lot. That's the... That's like where I go. I don't know. I don't want to doubt him. It feels like if anybody could, he could. Because mm-hmm. um, the numbers are insane. And, and the clutch stats, there's all that too. Like these are, here's the thing. You can't possibly say these are like uh, empty stats. <laughs> they no. are like every single one of these points and boards and assists and whatever is needed for them to still win, you know, by two on any given night, by five in overtime. For him to get them there and then drag him in overtime to the victory. It is wild watching this team. The the fact that he's assisting more than half his team's basket. So every time they come down, every second play where he doesn't score, he's making the assist. Like, he is the guy. And if you're going to be arguing for Jokic, the thing you're also going to be arguing is when he's off the floor, they suck. So he's extremely valuable. I, I thought the Russell Westbrook... Remedy would, would heal, but it's even worse. The bench is even worse than the last few years. 2022, there are minus eight points per possession when he was off. The next year, minus 10, basically. The next year, minus eight. So they kept losing yeah. by several points. Now it's minus 25.1. Yeah. They're getting hammered when he's off the floor. The, the Westbrook, Strother, Peyton Watson, who's now in the starting lineup, and Saric, who's now been yanked entirely from the rotation, has not worked. Malone said, okay, we're going to play seven, seven and a half guys now that Gordon's out. Now we're playing seven guys, and it's all Jokic. So he needs to do everything. Like the other night against the Mavs, they lost when he didn't play by 11 points, but they won by two because he kicked ass when he was out there. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's just it, it, make up whatever story you want. He's playing multiple sports on this floor. Like when he had that centered pass, I think it was Brown. Christian Brown, who passed it to him in the middle, it looked like he was playing water polo. Like oh, he yeah. caught it up here, and he flung it underneath. Like he is—he's perfect. He's perfect right now. The only counter to him not being the MVP frontrunner is like 
you're bored of it. And like the narrative of yeah. like, you don't want him to have a fourth because of, for whatever reason, you don't want him in that rarefied air of people that have only won that many. I forget who wrote this, but it's really true. The more MVP trophies an NBA player wins, the more improbable it becomes that he will land another. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's fair or not, that tends to be the reality. I was going through YouTube the other day and I'm like looking at like just like little Jokic sort of clips, other shows, shows I've never even heard of. I didn't know who these people were. Everybody's got a podcast. Everybody does. And uh, I'm jo- I'm watching a couple of them and it's like there were guys just blatantly saying, I'm bored of it. I don't want them to win. <laughs> it's like, and then the other guys going, well, come on. I mean, that's, that's a sort of a crazy argument. You're just bored of it. Yeah. But, but there is voter fatigue. I didn't even mention that at the beginning when I said I didn't think he was going to win coming into the season, having won three. Their team eliminated in the second round. Only one title as they seem to be declining a little bit as a team. I didn't mention that I had voter fatigue, but it is part of it. We, yeah, you, but you also, correct me if I'm wrong, like everybody else thought, there's no way he can do more. Yeah. Like he already has stupid stats from all of his other MVP years. Yeah, yeah. And it's no. like, there's what could he possibly do more? And he's leveled up. He has. And, and has had to, as we talked about, it feels like. Yeah, and he's stepped up to the three-point line, hitting more threes yeah. than he has in his career. He's just damn good at it. And this this team is just extremely fun. And uh, people who say, uh, the NBA is boring, too many three-point shots, this team doesn't do that mm-hmm. because Jokic is a monster and can score underneath, obviously. Ball fake, ball fake, ball fake, ball fake, ball fake, and, and if he misses, he just tips it in. Yeah, every he's time. so good. Yeah, he's, he's just, just like unique. the master at missing a shot and scoring off his own miss. Yeah, he's unique. He's he's very, very good. So my voter fatigue kind of went out the window when they started turning it on. And he had he knew, as you said, we're 0-2. Okay, you know, Porter's not turning on. Jamal Murray's not a monster yet. He was basically I, I need, calling out his team. We can't hit threes. Yeah. Like nobody could hit a shot. The bench yeah. sucked. Yeah. I mean, so again, Sarge is out of the rotation. I thought the Westbrook Sarge would be fine, but Sarge is looking old. They need help on that bench. Because they are so bad, they're getting bombed when the bench comes on by 25 points per 100 possessions. That's a lot. So <laughs> the starting lineup has to overcome that. Now, I think they have started to play more inspired ball together. Like Jamal Murray has improved. Yeah recently they've got this somehow this inspiration to play together with Aaron Gordon out somehow uh, they look like they're really cohesive and Christian Brown has been extremely good in KCP's uh, spot now filling in for him he's just been good so what's this... gonna be fascinating though is like f- you know fast forward to the end of the season let's say the Nuggets are in the fifth or sixth seed right and he has these type of numbers but they're like a little bit lower in the Western Conference standings. Similar, let's call it, to Westbrook, you know, winning his MVP, where they were a little lower in the rankings, but he's averaging the triple-double. And then we have SGA on an incredible Thunder team or Tatum on an incredible Celtics team or Mitchell even on an incredible Cavs team. That is like, whatever, 10 games clear of where the Nuggets are. That's going to be, a once again, a fascinating debate of like, what does valuable mean? Mm-hmm. You know, like like you're saying, take take Jokic off the Nuggets, and they're probably the worst team in the league. Mm-hmm. When people would maybe would be right to say, but that'll be that'll be fun. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, that'll probably be what happens. Right, and that's why I kind of didn't think Jokic would be convincing enough, especially in a very difficult Western Conference, to have enough separation towards the top of the standings because it just feels like they all are going to beat each other. And so no one's going to have 60 wins. Sure, sure. But there is there is the Shea possibility, especially with Chet Holmgren being out. He has to do more. And yeah. so there's that narrative the next couple months. If they're still able to win as many games as they have been winning, which is going to be very hard. But if they come close to 60 wins, Shea's got a great narrative. Yeah. And that's why I kind of thought Luca in general, just my thoughts about the Western Conference, because they would all sort of be in the 50-55 in general um, that Luca would win his first, especially taking his team to the finals, somewhere Shea hasn't been. So, hey, I'm writing a narrative from the last season, yeah, which kind of sucks. Yeah. But come on, I think, I think last season in the past. I man. know. I think voters do care about that, just about the the history of this player, mm. and and uh, yeah, it's the fatigue thing. And maybe I'm yeah, I'm just playing into it more because he has won three. Maybe I'm playing that card. And I think the whole Westbrook winning the MVP the year he did you start to wonder like will any of the voters ever really want to like award a team that is let's say not top four or five in a conference 
because that got a lot of backlash and still does get to talk about to this day, like as great as he was and how important as he was to that team, to the Thunder, to like get them to those wins, but they were still like much lower in the rankings, like, or in the seeding. So I don't know, like, I just wonder if like we've almost have like, it's like a set rule now that they mm. won't vote for someone unless like your top three or whatever it is, mm-hmm. whatever arbitrary line you put it at. Yeah, who knows? Let's hear from you. Can Jokic win his fourth? Are we talking about it too early? You're damn right we are. 